Welcome to Movin' and Groovin' in Elementary Music. This is Chrissy Hutzel from Hutzel House of Music. Before we get too far into this, please make sure that you found the handout that goes with this session. The handout can be found for free in my store at Teachers Pay Teachers. There is a link in the Music Crew Collaborative as well as in the caption to this YouTube video. The handout is full of links to everything that I have to talk about here, and it is something that you'll definitely want to have at your disposal. In this session, we will cover brain energizers, movement-based brain breaks, musical activities with movement, books and songs with movement connections, and out of your seat learning activities. Brain energizers are designed to energize and focus the brain and the body. These should be quick activities that students learn to do easily and can be used as transitions, warm-ups, cool downs, or time fillers. These should be easy enough that you don't need to spend time explaining it after the first time, and new students should be able to pick it up quickly by following their classmates. This activity is called Hands Like This. I was first introduced to this by my original mentor in elementary music, David Dendler, and then learned some extensions on the idea from Lissa Ray, who was my movement instructor for level one for certification. Uh, hands Like This is a call and response game, so the teacher will play the drum three times and say, hands like this, and the students will respond by clapping three times and saying, hands like this, hands like this. So teachers, the drum, and students are clapping. Hands like this, hands like this, repeat, hands like this, hands like this. The teacher then counts to three and plays the drum, one, two, three, and the students respond, four, one, two, three, four. So both of those things you do twice in a row. Then this teacher will call a different body part that the students are asked to move to the beat. This is non-locomotor movement. They should be staying in their spot and using only the body part that has been indicated. I like to do a, a mixture of um, fine motor and gross motor in these, so I'll try to pick different um, body parts that can be demonstrating those different skills. So here's an example of hands like this. body part. That's what I do with my youngest students. So then I would repeat all of that and go on to maybe shoulders. Or if I want something a little bit more fine motor, do like fingers or toes. And some students will want to move their whole front of their foot and some are like wiggling their toes inside their shoes. And either way is fine with me. Um, so that's how I started with in my kindergarten lessons. When I go up to first grade, I add one of the extensions that I learned from Lissa and that is to have students change the way they do a movement. So I would start off the same. Hands like this, hands like this, hands like this, hands like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Move your shoulders to the beat. get up to second grade, I incorporate some locomotor movement with the non-locomotor movement. So once they get into second grade, and then I continue and use this in third and maybe the beginning of fourth grade, um, we do the same thing as I did with kindergarten and first, but then add, move that part around the room. So then after the students have isolated and done non-locomotor movement for each body part, and then done a different way to move that body part, then they move around the room while also moving that body part. So that would sound like this. Hands like this, hands like this, hands like this, hands like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Move your fingers to the beat.
repeat and picking a different body part. As soon as I do hands like this again, the students freeze wherever they are and listen for the new body part. At the end, I usually do my last one is move your whole self. Um, that gives the kids a chance to get those wiggles out and they're all wiggling and giggling by the end of it. So that would sound like this at the, as the last body part that I choose. Hands like this. sit back down in their seat. In an effort to make your life easier, I have created videos you can use with your students of all three levels of this activity. You can find the links for these videos in the handout. In this activity, I ask my students to match what they hear from the instrument in their feet. I expect them to be able to follow the tempo that I'm using as well as listen to the dynamics of how I'm playing to adjust the weight of their footsteps. I'll start off with something very basic. When I stop playing, the students freeze and then I choose something a little bit different. After that, I might change something to or we would try something a little bit faster. Once they've gotten the hang of those, I'll try to add in some different rhythms to get the students to use different types of movements, such as skipping. When they've gotten into that, they start to pay more attention to what I'm playing, and I might tell them to watch my sticks for an indication of what to do. So that would indicate that they should be jumping with both of their feet. If they can get that figured out, then I would move to something more like this. and they would be jumping with their feet together and apart. I also try to move in some other things um, using melodic lines. So I could do something like this. With that, there's not a single right answer. I've had students interpret that as high and low, and so they've used their levels and marched down from low up to high and back down. I've had some students interpret that to be switching directions, so they'll go one way, and then when I switch the melodic direction back down, they'll go a different direction or back and forth. Um, so we've had different interpretations of that, and it's all just a great way to get kids to respond to what they hear. You can also find a link in the handout to the YouTube video of this activity ready to use with your students. Freeze dances are always a class favorite. There are so many fun ways to do freeze dances. You can use any music that you want or just a simple drum beat for students to move to, then give them a pose to match and freeze. A wooden artist figure is a great manipulative to use to find poses. You can pose him or you can let one of your students put the artist figure into a pose of their choice. Another option is to use a video, such as this example from my wooden figure freeze resource. You can choose one of these videos that each includes five different excerpts of contrasting styles of music. Students will listen and move to the music and then freeze to the pose that they see on the screen. <laughs> Another 
idea for Pose Inspirations is to pair up with your art teacher and choose some famous pieces of art that students can choose a character from to match. If you know your students well, you know who likes to come up and be in charge of the class. Choose a student leader to strike a pose for everyone to match. Yoga poses are another great way to help students center themselves. Using cards such as these yoga pretzels spread around the room, students find one to match in between listening to music or a drum beat. This last one is one of my favorites and it comes from my friend Jen at Noteworthy by Jen. I love her glue dancing cards, a collection of cards with different body parts that students glue to the floor and move the rest of their body. The giggles with this one are out of control. Let's move on to musical activities with movement. Incorporating movement helps to engage the whole child. Purposeful movement reduces unintentional wiggles. When children are engaged in movement activities, they are less likely to be distracted. Students are often expected to sit still in their classrooms all day. When they are with us, we should give them the opportunity to move. One of the first things I do as I welcome students into my classroom in the younger grades is tell them to use a certain type of footstep to go to their seat. So I might say, tiptoe feet to your seat or marching feet to your seat. By giving them that instruction at the door, they are engaged and moving in a purposeful way before we have even sat down to begin class. Simply telling students what kind of feet to use anytime they're moving and transitioning in the music room helps them to focus on the task of moving and stop some of the socialization that occurs at that time. Choreographed dancing is a great way to get kids moving in music class. Folk dancing is fun and accessible to all ages. You can modify dances to use them across different grade levels. These folk dance formation cards from Mrs. Stoffer's Music Room are a great tool to help kids visualize their formations. If you're uncomfortable with teaching choreographed dancing, a great resource to get started is Teaching Movement and Dance by Phyllis Weikart. Her book gives very detailed instructions on how to do the different moves, and it goes well with the rhythmically moving CDs to accompany the student dances. Another option is the Music for Creative Dance CD series by Eric Chappelle. Maestro May I is a fun activity to do in small groups or centers with kindergarten through third grade students to learn and practice their tempo vocabulary. Each player must ask the maestro permission to move a certain number of steps at a particular tempo, but don't get too greedy or the maestro can turn you down. If you need to stay socially distanced, this is an easy game to modify. Take turns being the maestro and picking an animal for everyone to act like at a particular tempo instead. Manipulatives are a great way to engage your students. Putting an object in a child's hands helps them focus. Students love when things have a seasonal connection, like these cute snowballs from floating down the river on Etsy. Change the words of a known song to match the season and you can play games again and again. Bean bags are a great tool that can be used any time of year, and beanie babies are a huge hit with our students. You can often get them donated to your classroom for free. Another great idea is dancing with ribbons. Ribbons are fun to dance with, and if you don't have any, you can get a roll of crepe paper streamers at the dollar store and give each child their own to keep. I am fortunate to have a floor staff built into my room, but you can make one yourself easily with tape or Velcro strips if you're on carpet. You can project spelling notes on the screen and have kids stand on the lines and spaces to spell out the word and practice reading notes. You could throw a ball or a bean bag onto the floor staff and then have students identify the note names. You could play racing games to see which team can spell a word using their bodies the fastest. These spelling notes are available in various formats in my stores at Teachers Pay Teachers, Etsy, and Boom Learning in both treble and bass clef. Practicing rhythmic reading can get monotonous, but adding movement makes it more fun. This series of games from my Teachers Pay Teachers store incorporates movement, singing, and playing instruments if you choose. 
Spread out the cards with the rhythms at the appropriate level around the room on the floor. Students sing an original song and move around the room. And when the song is over, they find a new card to sing, play, or say. This can also be used for assessment if you pull a few cards over near the teacher and call a student over one at a time to perform for the teacher. Cup activities were some of the things that saved me during our last year of teaching where we were not allowed to sing or play recorder. Cup games are a fun way to practice rhythmic skills. Cups are cheap and easy to clean. You can use disposable party cups or invest in some sturdier plastic cups, such as the ones sold for kids at Ikea. Cup activities are easily accessible to teach virtually if needed. It's a great way to study form while practicing rhythms. You can use popular music or traditional music, and these can be set up as passing activities or can be designed to be done individually. You can also offer differentiation and give students options on what pattern to perform so everyone can be successful together. The visuals that you see here are from the cup activity that I created for the song Dance Monkey. My students in fourth through sixth grade loved this activity. Reading to children is worthwhile and should be done in every classroom. Creating a song or activity to go with a book turns that book into an instant favorite. Adding motions to a song helps to solidify the lyrics and aids in memorization. Check with your librarian or your English language arts teachers to see what books are class favorites and try to create a lesson that incorporates music and movement. Rick Charette is a singer, songwriter, and author who creates music for kids with his bubblegum band. His books, I Love Mud and Alligator in the Elevator, are both favorites in my classroom. The back of each book includes sheet music and movement suggestions. There is also a CD available. It is a full album that includes songs for both of these books, plus many more. Here's a funny story. When the seniors came back in May to do their graduation walk through our halls, several of them approached me and asked, do you still teach everyone the mud song? That was my favorite. Zin Zin Zin, A Violin by Lloyd Moss is a great book to introduce students to instruments of the orchestra and the counting words for musical ensembles. There is a reading radio episode made with this book to help bring it to life with real musicians. After reading this book, it's fun and necessary, I mean, they've been sitting for a while, to do a movement activity. Have students pull a card from two stacks. One has the ensemble counting words and the other has physical activities that they can do. Students recall what number goes with the counting card and then do that physical activity that many times. For example, a student might pull a quintet of crunches. Students would work together to remember that quintet represents the number five and they would all do five crunches together. Another extension idea after this book is to teach conducting patterns. Songs with movement connections are fun to use too. If you attended my session at last year's virtual conference, you may remember my ideas for Hop Old Squirrel as a movement piece with recorders. First, we learn to sing the song, then we add movement on the word hop, and then I give kids a creative way to come up with different ways to move using words that are one or two syllables to fit ta or tt. Then we learn to play the song on recorder, divide into two groups so some of us are singing and playing while others are hopping, and then we add a B section with a poem about squirrels. This gives us a chance to switch whose turn it is to be singing and whose turn it is to be playing. Another fun song to add movement is Engine Engine number nine. Create train stations around your classroom or outside. Students form a line and follow the leader from one station to another while singing or playing the song. Perform a task at each station, then move on to the next. Consider choosing a student who is giving their best effort to be the conductor of the train. Everyone will follow the leader, so they'll follow that student. Switch who it is each time to encourage everyone to give their best effort. Sarah Sponda is a fun song to sing with your middle level elementary students. My fifth graders love it. 
Adding rhythm sticks in a circle game is fun and can be adapted to be made more or less difficult to match the ability level of your group. After learning a simple rhythm stick exercise, continue to expand on it and make it more complicated. Students will be happy to continue singing the song if you continue to provide different movement activities that evolve and keep their interest. After doing several rounds of evolving rhythm sticks patterns, give the students the chance to break into small groups and create their own. Here's an example of one of my classes singing the song Sarah Spanda with the accompanying rhythm stick activity in a circle. Students are also increasingly engaged in other out-of-your-seat learning activities. Students are up and moving around the room, but not with purposeful choreographed movement. Activities are based on discovery and have flexibility. The teacher is more free to assist students who need extra help. High-achieving students are also free to help their classmates. These can also be differentiated to meet individual student needs. Students love to play catch. Toss a ball that has clear sections such as a soccer ball or beach ball. Write questions or musical notation on each section of the ball. Toss it around the room. When someone catches the ball, they must answer the question or read the notes on the section that their right thumb is touching. This can be played for fun or for points. Another out of your seat learning activity is musical matches. Create a set of cards that have matches, such as identical vocal pathways as seen here, animal sounds, or rhythms written on them. I suggest making the matches on two separate colors so students know to look for someone with the opposite color than the one they have. Give one card to each student. Students then move around the room, making the sound on their card until they find the other person who has their match. Collect the cards and repeat. Write the room activities are a great break from the traditional flow of music class. These are also a wonderful activity to leave for substitutes. Post cards around the room for students to find and either answer a question or copy the content to their worksheet. These can be differentiated easily. For example, you can post cards with the same icon but different difficulty levels on different colors of paper, such as in this example where the blue card uses the notes B, A, and G, the red card moves on to include the notes E and D, and the green card at the bottom goes all the way down to low C. You can just tell your students which color to look at as they write the room. I hope you enjoyed the session. We covered brain energizers, movement-based brain breaks, musical activities with movement, books and songs with movement connections, and out-of-your-seat learning activities. If you followed along with my handout, you can find links to many of the ideas and resources that I shared in this presentation. My entire Teachers Pay Teacher store is on sale 20% off June 29th through July 2nd, 2021. I am excited to share that I just launched an Etsy store. Use coupon code RENEW21 to get 20% off your entire purchase. This code is valid June 29th through July 2nd, 2021. Let's have a giveaway. Follow the link in your handout for a giveaway. Winners will be announced on Thursday, July 1st at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Be sure to check out our virtual exhibit hall where you will find some links to some of the best resources the music crew has to offer. Look in the handout for links to purchase many of the items shared in this presentation. West Music has even agreed to offer free shipping to all conference attendees for orders over $25.
Use the code 8 Music Crew to get this free shipping offer that's good through July 30th, 2021. Special thanks to the Music Crew and everyone in the Music Crew Collaborative for making this conference possible. Thanks to Artifacts Graphics and Kimberly Guesswine Fonts for artwork used in this presentation. Also, thanks to Music Crew members Noteworthy by Jen, Mrs. Stoffer's Music Room, and Floating Down the River for products and resources that I highlighted in this presentation.